Well, hello, and uh, welcome again to the Labyrinth of Limitations, episode zero. This is the final installment of uh, this little primer set, just kind of giving some overview into exploring chromaticism. Um, yeah, it's hard to go too deep. Um, I'm using this whole channel as kind of a, a means to organize my thinking um, around um, some text I'm developing for students, and, um, and I'm going to be sharing software with you guys that I've been developing, um, too. Uh, I'm working out a way to share that stuff. So, um, we were just talking about Wagner, and here we go. What if I just like that sound? And I don't want to do this. If I like that sound a lot, well, that's a dominant 7 flat 5. Now, Wagner very much treats it as an appoggiatura. Well, there's a piece by Messian that really just stays with that sound of the dominant 7 flat 5. Here, I'll play the sound. So, so this is... of this note, just there. right? Beautiful sounds. That's a, I love that sound. So Messian um, has a piece that I uh, arranged several years ago and recorded. Um, I'll link to the album in the comments. It's on iTunes. And um, it's called Plaint Calm, the album, and the piece by Messian is called Plaint Calm. It's a piece for piano, originally. And it's kind of stretchy, so I'll do my best here. Um, but here's the intro of it. Here's the beginning parts. So um, that's the intro of the piece. And um, it's very kind of just hanging out in this unresolved kind of static place. And I'm going to talk about why that is. Um, first off, the sound world that's being hit there, very much this dominant 7 flat 5, D dominant 7 flat 7, dominant 7 flat 5, you could say. And then it goes to D major 6, and then it goes to A flat 7. Okay, so we'll call it that for now, for the first part of the discussion. So then I would move through um, the dominant sub. And now he doesn't treat either, he doesn't treat this as something that needs to be resolved. Nor does he treat the A flat seven as something that needs to go to um, you know normal. He doesn't need that. So we've gone a long way since the first part of this uh, episode zero, right? So um, moving through these, then we hear a lot of this sound, and that's the sound of borrowing. You might recognize that. So I did. I like that fingering, but it could be where I can really see the borrowing. What I'm doing there is, it's, I could be, and then, what is this one going to be? I'm just doing borrowing, if you look at the borrowing episode, on E flat minor 6, because that is the minor 6 diminished for A flat 7. So I'm going and then that's a sound that I'm really hearing there. And then I'm also hearing D flat D dominant seven flat five, which could be in a whole tone scale, right? Here's sounds. Um, 
also I'm using a scale that I'm going to talk about in an episode coming up. Uh, Barry Harris's dominant seven flat five diminished scale, which is super awesome. I'm super in love with it these days. So, So we're hearing the borrowing a lot because um, Messiaen is aware of the chromatic space around him and that gives us access to these borrowed notes. So Barry Harris, he's shown us a map just like Dmitry Tomoshko with his, with his geometries and other concepts in the book that I'm going to talk about, particularly the five components of tonality um, that help to explain why this stuff works for our ears um, in a future episode. But... Uh, Another thing is that there's even more staticness in the sound of this than what I've said so far kind of, you know, explains. Because also, this D dominant 7 flat 5 is also A flat dominant 7 flat 5. It's the same chord. So if we look at the Tesseract, we can see I play D dominant 7 flat 5, and I play A flat dominant 7 flat 5. It's the same chord. It just flips around. This is the root, the fifth, the the seventh and the third, and now if it's A flat dominant seven flat five, it is the fifth flat five, the root, the third, and the seventh. So that whoops. This is both of those chords. So it's like we're not even moving anywhere. Which is something really important. Um came up with a student, we were looking at a Ponce piece that is very much in this world that I'm gonna talk about in a video actually. And it's like it really starts to become borderline like you're just not moving anywhere and pieces by Toru Takamitsu a composer I love um, has a static quality a lot of the times because it's like movement doesn't happen in the traditional functional harmony sense because you just start to move around these circles and it's glorious sound it's it's fun to get in and out of that and um, so this dominant 7 flat 5 we're going to talk about more but I've talked about how we can use it over um, you know that could be a dominant you know seventh uh you know moving to resolve to a one chord and um and in this case in the messian he's just not doing it so i hope that this has been um kind of a fun primer to talk about chromaticism and um how it adds color we get color we get um kind of the ooh moments of something being so wrong yet so right um and mainly that's because of efficient voice leading so chromaticism this message has been brought to you by efficient voice leading the, all this stuff moving around the tesseract so so those are so those are two dominant seven flat fives that are in the same tesseract so um it's fun stuff and um we will be continuing with other um normal episodes and thank you for being with me and welcome to the labyrinth <laughs>